About five years ago, I got this machine as a hand-me-down, which was my first actual gaming PC. Powered by an Intel Core i7-3820, a NVIDIA Quadro M6000, and 12GB of DDR3 RAM. The hard order was data at this point, but hey, 11 year old me was just happy to enroll in Minecraft and Roblox. Fast forward to now, where I actually use the computer for productivity reasons, it's yeah, it's not doing so hot. One of my friends built his gaming PC a year ago and told me how easy it was. I mean, I've built other stuff like Lego sets, keywords, or four, so how hard could it be? And with Christmas coming, I go, why not build my own computer, you know? Having made up my mind, I decided to research which parts to get. First of all, I already know what CPU and platform I'm getting since I already have it right over here. Before I even thought about upgrading my computer, one of my friends reached out to me asking if I wanted his extra CPU, as he had a spare one. I initially declined, but after 5 months he still had the CPU and gave it to me. He gave me a AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, a chip with 6 cores and 12 threads, 2 cores more than my current CPU. With the CPU sorted, I started looking for a motherboard to pair with the CPU. Okay, I think I found the right motherboard for my needs. Uh, this Asus Prime B550 has plenty of I.O. and was on sale for 109. Uh, well, keyword was. Yeah, it's not on sale anymore. It's back to its original price of 139.99, and since I only have a projected budget of about 400 bucks, I need to save money of where, wherever I can. So instead of this motherboard, I decided to get this MSI B550A Pro motherboard because this has a BIOS flashback button, something that the other motherboard does not have. So what a BIOS flashback button does is that if your motherboard doesn't support the CPU that you have currently, that you can just flash the BIOS on it to support it instead of the other, other Asus one that I was looking at. This does not have a CPU flashback button, which means if your motherboard does not support your new CPU, you're out of luck. You gotta, you gotta use a different CPU with it to flash the actual BIOS itself. So yeah, that's one of the key factors why I got the Asus motherboard instead of this one, so. For RAM, I decided to deviate and look for deals on a different site. Okay, this is a bit unorthodox, but I, just, I decided to look on AliExpress for RAM and I found this. Dude, it's waifu RAM, dude. Dude, waifu RAM for $52 for 3,600 mega transfers, about, it says 32 gigs. It looks, it looks pretty decent, dude. Okay, let's check out the reviews. Let's, let's see. Like 4.9, 4.9 rating. It uh, looks like everything checks out. Yeah, it looks like everything checks out. Let's, honestly, dude, I'm getting this RAM, dude. It's a waifu RAM. Who wouldn't want waifu RAM, dude? Now time for the most important part, the GPU. Originally, I wanted to go with this RTX 3060 by Gigabyte, the Gigabyte Gaming o OC RTX 3060. It's a 12 gigabyte version too, but I found something much, much better that will actually fit with the build that I'm planning to do, so. After ordering all my parts and getting few as gifts, I waited for them all to arrive. Okay, here we are. Six days later, all the PC parts have arrived, but we're missing a few things, so... Okay, now we finally have all the parts. Um, yeah, I'm a bit nervous to build this, trying not to uh, get it in my mind that if anything goes wrong, that I have to pay a lot more money than it's worth, but hey, it's just part of building a computer, so let's just get started. <laughs>
at this point, you may be wondering, where's the rest of the footage? Well, there is no footage. I didn't realize this at first, but halfway through the building process, or just installing a CPU cooler in general, my camera died, and my phone was low on storage, so I couldn't really record anything, so... I just ditched the recording process for now and just decided to build the PC. But hey, it's right here. As you can see, the LEDs are on. And I even took B-roll of it with on. Yeah, it's running. It's actually running. I'm glad I didn't break it. <laughs> or else anything would be expensive to replace. But yeah, that's a, that's a first for me. Also, one thing I forgot to mention. Yeah, the GPU unboxing I was hyped about. Yeah, the recording turned into like this. Yeah, everything's out of frame, so I'll, I'll display whatever I can salvage for you, like, guys, like, right now. This is the Yesin RTX 3070. First of all, yeah, this is the 3070, not the 3060. Second of all, waifu, dude, what? I found this card while watching the dog does tech stuff on YouTube. Uh, here's the, I think, the 6700 XT version of this card, and then once I saw it, I just had to buy it. This actually got a really good price of about... Three, $399 when usually like 4070s go new for like 450 so got a really good deal on this. Anyways, let's just start unboxing it. And it's still sealed other than this right here. I don't know what happened to shipping, but let's just open it. Oh. And then this. Oh, okay. You gotta, you gotta do it right. You gotta, you gotta. Definitely feels like I've done, I've done something lewd over here. Definitely feels like I've done some, I did something lewd. Okay. Now, time for the actual GPU itself. Okay, got nice packaging. Okay, inside. Okay, that just. Oh, it's pushing the camera. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. We got stickers. It actually looks really nice. Oh, buddy. The GPU itself. I've been waiting for this for so long. With the GPU, dude. This looks so good. This look, this looks absolutely good. It's so good. Oh, look at that, dude. That looks incredible. Okay, when I originally looked at this card, this card right here was introduced to have like a scent in the card, right? Out with the, <coughs> oh, mm. there's, uh, there's, uh, there's definitely perfume in it. Editor me here, so I found out why they didn't put perfume in the card. So it turns out they discontinued the 3070 version of this card, like, right after I got it. I mean, right by, like, two days. Like, if you check the website right now with the 3070 version, it says no page available, which means they pulled it. So that probably means my card was probably one of the last ones off the assembly line for the 3070 version. And thus, they probably didn't have time to put the perfume in it, so. It's funny, it, it doesn't have a scent. So I think they stopped doing the scent. But dude, this looks absolutely gorgeous. Dude. So, that was a graphics card unboxing. Now, you may be wondering, how well does it run against my old computer? Well, I took some benchmarks over six games and a com a comparing the numbers, yeah, this runs pretty well. Let's get more into the specifics. As mentioned before, we will be going over five games ranging from Valorant to Forza Horizon 5. Premiere Pro is also on the benchmark, completing a five minute 4K render. Each game has their respective settings, aiming for the highest preset. The only exception to this rule is the finals, in which I just put it to max for fun. Let's start with Valorant. On Breeze and everything on high, Valorant only achieves averages of 112 FPS. Valorant is a more CPU heavy game, and with only 4 cores, the Core i7 3820 struggles. In my testing, GPU usage for Valorant never went past 35%. For the new PC, how can I put this? 
394 FPS. That's three and a half times the FPS of the old PC. It shows how far CPUs have come in the last 12 years, as the 4 core A3rd i7 3820 was great in 2012, but now a current day budget gaming CPU gives three times their performance. It even reached a maximum FPS of 638. Average performance can be improved in actual play since I benchmarked in deathmatch mode a more intense game mode. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, with high settings and ultra shaders, the old PC managed to pull out a 77 FPS average. It does dip below 60 FPS, hitting 44 with the minimum FPS, but that's if you're going through the town section of the map. I would also like to mention that I created a special benchmark route for this game instead of the inbuilt benchmark, since the inbuilt benchmark takes place in the town section. It doesn't really reflect real performance since most of the world is just open fields. With this in mind, the new PC with the same settings pulls 178. FPS average. That is a 100 FPS increase and enough to provide a high refresh rate experience. It even went as high as 215 in some areas, and the town section of the map brings down FPS to only 120. Going into the finals, can I just say how fun this game is? Playing the heavy class and squashing people with the sledgehammer is one of the most satisfying parts of the game, and the destructibility of the buildings can make things chaotic. About that, since the buildings are destructible, this is a pretty heavy game. On everything cranked, except RTX, the old PC managed to squeeze out 43 FPS. A playable experience, but the FPS would get even lower, dropping down to 22 FPS when things get hectic. Granted, this is on everything maxed, with how competitive this game is, I would turn it down to low. Even that, then, the old PC only manages around 75 FPS on everything low. The new PC, on the other hand, put on an average of 112 FPS. That's still around two times as much performance as the old PC, but it shows how heavy this game could get. Minimum FPS hit as low as 75 and a maximum of 145 FPS. I even have room for RTX ray tracing, which surprisingly, in this game, doesn't take performance as much as I thought it would. Moving on to BeamNG.Drive, I mostly put this game in as filler, as I don't have many recent games. I underestimated how demanding this game could be on the CPU, as the old PC with the i7-3820 nets an average FPS of only 55 FPS. Even though this game doesn't look as good as Forza Horizon 5, Need for Speed Unbound, or others, it is still hard to run for an older machine. The new PC with an average of 143 FPS just out being the younger kid on the block with the Ryzen 5 5600X with its 6 cores and 12 threads demolishes the the 11-year-old midlife crisis i7-3820 with just 4 cores and 8 threads. Moving on to the only productivity benchmark with Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro actually benefits by having more CPU cores, but can switch depending on the situation. With this in mind, the old PC completes a 5 minute 4K render in about 7 minutes and 4 seconds. That's still pretty fast, fast enough to grow, grab a stack and eat it. The new PC completes the 4K 5 minute render in about 2 minutes and 16 seconds. It's reaching speeds to will your blink and the render is about done. Another plus is that this piece can actually handle 4K video. I assembled the render benchmark timeline with my old PC and needed to use proxies to stop the damn thing from crashing. Now we can handle straight up 4K video, no proxy needed. Looking at the FPS numbers and doing some calculations, the new PC is about 2.8 more times powerful than my old one, and I can definitely feel that while playing games and just doing basic tasks. This PC build was actually a pretty easy experience for me, as I was always into tech and just computers in general. For the normal person who isn't into tech though, you will save a bit of money by just building your own. Just get a pre-built PC if you don't want to mess things up. Overall, this PC is great, and I probably will be keeping this build for a long time. Unless something breaks, I won't be thinking of upgrading anytime soon. My old build of 5 years has served me well, but it's time to decommission it. Okay, I need to tell you guys something. <laughs> I've spent way too long trying to make this video. When I started this whole build process, right? It was the first January of 2024, right? Well, hold on, let me get my phone real quick. I got my phone here. Um, it is currently Tuesday, April 2nd, 6.50 in the afternoon. Um, yeah, it's April 2nd. I've spent way too long trying to make this video, but that's other factors like school. I'm a full-time student, if you haven't noticed already. Um, but yeah, that's just been taking up all my time. And yeah, also, yeah, I've had this build for four months already. Hold on, let me show you guys. Again, I have this, I had this build for four months already. It's been doing great. Um, again, it's editing this video 
after coming back to it for four months. I put a little stuff in there. I got Kaguya chilling over there with the Sayu case that I actually salvaged from one of my phone cases. And also got the usual mouse mat. Um, yeah, I got um, anime figurines now. The, yeah, this is my whole setup now. It's honestly pretty nice. But anyways, let, let's get back to the scope of the actual video. Yeah, uh, sorry this video took a long time to make. Uh, I have more video ideas that I'd plan to do. If time allows me to, some somewhere during the summer, maybe I'll release it, but I still have to make them first, and I don't know what time will do, so yeah. Oh yeah, um, this is the first video which actually shows my face. I don't know if this is gonna be a permanent edition or not, but I'll see how I feel about it when I upload it. Anyways, that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see this content from me again, make sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, um, add a playlist, comment, onto the video uh anyways i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye guys